Hello from New York. I'm Liz Bickersham. And I'm Lee Leonard, and this is Showbiz Today Live, March 12th, 1986. Fast-moving magazine-style news programs. That's infotainment, and that's our showbiz focus. We'll bring you part two of our interview with music legend Quincy Jones. Leslie Ann Downs is a woman possessed in a new movie, Nomads. And jazz singer Nancy Wilson is still knocking them dead after 30 years in the business. At the top of the showbiz headlines, this late-breaking story, Victoria Sellers, daughter of the late film star Peter Sellers, and the subject of a Playboy magazine photo layout this month, is wanted for arrest. She's charged with belonging to a violent Hollywood-based cocaine trafficking ring. Federal prosecutors say the ring used violence and threats of violence to move into the territory of other drug dealers. The indictment by a federal grand jury charges that Victoria Sellers was used as bait to trap men who would then get beaten up. Prosecutors expect the model and the actress to turn herself in. Live radio coverage of the United States Senate began this morning. At the push of a button by Senator Charles Mathias, television coverage will begin on June the 1st and run through July the 15th. Then on July the 29th, the Senate will vote on whether to make broadcast coverage a permanent thing or not. Many of the first Senate speeches to be carried on radio were about the radio coverage. Thanks to radio, you, the people on the Great Plains of Kansas, in our cities and on our farms, and up and down Main Street America, you are now listening to the sounds of the Senate. American Women in Radio and Television passed out its annual awards today in New York. The AWRT 11th Annual National Awards recognized radio and TV news and entertainment programs that show women in a realistic light. Most of the winners were programs that tackled serious subjects. The Cagney and Lacey episode on breast cancer, for instance. Talk. Yes. You want to talk about how we feel in case maybe I have breast cancer. Okay. But according to honorary chairperson Barbara Walters, the organization is not as strident as it was 11 years ago. I think what we see today is all facets. Um, represented for women, including humor. Perhaps 11 years ago we couldn't, uh, we couldn't tease ourselves. Today we're confident enough to be able to do that. That view is certainly evident in the selection of this winner, the premiere episode of Golden Girls, in which B. Arthur discusses her divorce. Rose, he left me 38 years later for a stewardess that he met on a business trip to Hawaii. It was her first flight. They said on arrival, give the passengers a lay. She got confused. <laughs> the 12th Annual People's Choice Awards last night drew top stars on both coasts, including at least one star who normally avoids award shows. These awards, however, reflect which movies, records, and TV shows are enjoyed by the public, not by other entertainers. More than a few stars consider the awards to be particularly meaningful because the fans get to vote. And fans, after all, make the ultimate decision as to who will succeed and who will fail in showbiz. Kenny Rogers was voted favorite country performer. I have always valued the People's Choice Awards, more importantly because those are the people that you work to every year. And I think you can win all the awards from your peers, and that's for the ego. But truthfully, these are the awards that I think uh, really represent how well you're doing in the community, and that's what's most important to me. Bill Cosby voted favorite all-around male entertainer and favorite TV star. Normally shuns award programs, but not this one. It doesn't seem to be a competitive issue as much as those who are really, really watching. And they say, the results happen to be, we like this show the most. Barbara Mandrell tied for favorite all-around female entertainer with Meryl Streep. According to the Gallup poll on which the awards are based, Sylvester Stallone is the country's favorite motion picture actor, but Back to the Future was the country's favorite film. Other favorites, male and female performer in a new TV show, Bruce Willis and Sybil Shepard from Moonlighting. Favorite television female performer, Linda Evans. Favorite new TV comedy, Golden Girls. While most of the winning actors were on hand at the live broadcast, two top singers were not there to accept their awards. Bruce Springsteen, favorite male singer, and Madonna, favorite female singer. And finally, 
in addition to the bulging list of commendations for We Are the World, it was voted Best New Song. Come on Showbiz Today. Our focus, infotainment. Entertainment news shows are sweeping the airwaves. Tomorrow, we'll profile actor Michael Keaton of the new movie Gung Ho. All that and more on Showbiz Today. And now back to Showbiz Today on CNN. A look in the mirror in our Showbiz Focus. We're looking at infotainment programs, programs like this one, among many others that combine news and entertainment. The story from Lauren Sidney. Infotainment is the label being used to describe the melding of news and entertainment. The word was coined for television, but Entertainment Tonight producer Jack Riley says the concept is much older. The, the decline of the magazines that service this kind of information, uh, the decline of the absence of people, the Jimmy Fiddlers and the people who were on radio in the old days who gave them this kind of information, um, went away and as people turned more and more to television and less and less to the printed media to get this information, uh, I think the need became apparent. In your own living room, there are varied topics that you can see on any given infotainment show. They can tell you how to fix a flat tire, how to keep your stomach flat, how to get married, and then they tell you how to get divorced. And without being too self-serving, they even will tell you which television shows you should watch. And now, magazine programs are becoming even more specialized. One such program is the Rock and Roll Evening News. Good evening. The farm just won't get tended if the farmer isn't there and the amber waves are... Producer great. Andy Friendly says this show fills an important gap. There are a lot of programs doing a little rock and roll news. Uh, there isn't one program of record that devotes itself entirely to that. MTV does a very good job and... Uh, they're pioneers, and I give them all the credit in the world. Doug Herzog is MTV's vice president of news and long-form programming. There's always been music news on MTV, and for a good reason. People who follow rock music closely, um, it's very much a big part of their lives. Uh, and everything that happens in the, the world of rock and roll makes a big difference to them, and they want to know about it first. As the number of infotainment shows increases, the TV industry will find out how many the public wants. But for now, at least TV programmers are willing to risk putting them on the air. Lauren Sidney, CNN, New York. Joining us now live in our New York studio is Al Massini. You may have seen his name in the credits for shows including Entertainment Tonight and Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Usually, the credit reads Concept by Al Massini. Al, welcome to our program, Showbiz. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Do you sometimes feel like uh, Dr. Frankenstein, that you've given birth to a monster? Oh, I hope not. I, I try to do shows that I like myself, and I hope everybody else likes them. In the infotainment uh, field, we heard uh, Mr. Riley, the uh, producer of Entertainment Tonight, say that uh, it's in place of magazines, yet there's People magazine, there's Us magazine. Is there just a, an unquenchable thirst on the part of the public for this type of news? Well, I, I think people would prefer to see it uh, on TV because it combines all of the elements in sight and sound, and that's exactly what I was trying to do with Entertainment Tonight. I was trying to put together Variety, TV Guide, and People Magazine actually into a TV show, and, and that was actually the basis for the format of the show. And having succeeded in that and, and other shows now, where, where do you see this type of format going? Has it reached the end of the line with the specialized shows such as a music news show? Uh, no, I don't think it's reached the end of the line. I think the, the real good ones will survive and the ones that are, are not good will be weeded out. I think there'll always be a place for it. I think there's still room for a few more, because I, but they all have to be highly focused and hit on some element uh, of the inf information entertainment area. And yet uh, E.T., which I guess is the uh, grandfather and the most successful of all of the <laughs> shows, isn't that closely focused. It, uh, it's all over the entertainment world, not just music, not just movies, not just television. So apparently uh, people want to see a little bit about everything. Well, that one was designed to give a complete picture of the entertainment news of the day. Uh, others will be more highly focused, like on Entertainment Tonight, for instance, we really want to show behind the scenes how people live at home, what they're actually doing. Uh, and so you can get a glimpse behind the gate of what 
uh, occurs in that particular house. On the start of something big, we really wanted to show how people uh, launched their career. What was the key element that made it all happen? Uh, so I think each show will have a specific uh, focus or point of view, but entertainment tonight gives you the broad stroke, and that's why we thought it was perfectly designed for access on a Monday through Friday basis. The, the more highly focused ones will be done perhaps on a weekly basis in, in a half hour, hour version. If you gave your crystal ball a rub, what do you think is next in this field? Oh, I, I think you'll uh, see more. I don't think the ones that will work when they get too highly focused, for instance, when you zero in on only one small segment, I think it's hard to sustain it economically. So it, it still has to be a combination of broad base at the same time focusing in on some specific area. Al, thank you very much for being thank with you. us this evening and great good luck in future ventures. Thank you, it's good to be here. We'll take a short break and Liz and I will be back with more Showbiz today right after this. Still to come on Showbiz Today, part two of our look at music monster Quincy Jones and a listen to song stylist Nancy Wilson. Tomorrow, we'll go behind the scenes of a touring company of the stage hit Dreamgirls. All that and more on Showbiz Today. And now back to Showbiz Today on CNN. The bang of hammers will give way to the boom of rock music tonight as New York welcomes a new nightclub. It's called Springfellows, and it's run by Peter Springfellow, the king of London's nightclub scene. His British friends, including Peter Frampton, Julian Lennon, and Duran Duran's John Taylor, are all expected to attend tonight's opening. Not surprisingly, it's the hottest ticket in town. And, of course, Showbiz Today will cover tonight's opening, and we'll have that for you tomorrow. Lee? The great blues harmonica player Sonny Terry died yesterday on New York's Long Island. Vaughn Saunders Terrell, 74 years ago, he was blinded by accidents in his youth, and he taught himself to play harmonica by imitating the sounds of trains and animals. He performed on the soundtrack of the film Crossroads, being released, ironically, this coming Friday. Singer Nancy Wilson has been a fixture in jazz music for three decades. She has a new album being released in the United States next week, and she's about to begin a club date in New York. Cheryl Washington caught up with her at a rehearsal. Here we stand Looking out into the last time song stylist Nancy Wilson performed in New York was in November. It was at the Blue Note Jazz Club, where she returns this week for a six-night engagement. Hand hand, we will stand united. Sweet Nancy, as she's affectionately known, has been satisfying audiences for 30 years and continues to do so with the release of her 50th album, Keep You Satisfied. It's been recorded and released already in Japan, but won't be available for distribution in the United States until next week. This one is the first one that's been released in the States on a national level in some, in some few years. But now the ones I've done in the last two years will be coming after this. It was all done in Japan. Uh, digital, the equipment is wonderful. Um, and I'm there with the rhythm when we do it, so it's not as isolated as it can be. Wilson's album was inspired by the Marvin Gaye classic, Just to Keep You Satisfied. It's a song she's wanted to sing for a long time. And when I first heard it, I died. I mean, when I hear it by Marvin, now it just makes me cry. I mean, I can sit there and just, oh, you know, I mean, that will put you wherever you want to be. I waited patiently to record it. Another favorite of Wilson's from the album is American Wedding Song. It is an open expression of how she feels about her country. In it allows me to say thank you. It allows me to speak, I think, on behalf of a lot of people, that this is a home. Uh, it is a melting pot. It's a great America. It's just, it's, it's sweet, it's bitter, but it's great. Cheryl Washington, CNN, New York. Now the conclusion of a two-part showbiz profile. Yesterday, we told you about the great musical accomplishments of Quincy Jones. Today, his less familiar role as a movie producer on The Color Purple. The story from Sandy Kenyon. The Color Purple was a rocket ride. So says record producer Quincy Jones of his first job as a movie producer. There's a time when you know this is, this is the one. This is it. Jones says he was attracted to the film version of Alice Walker's book because music was so much a part of it. She knew that was a part of the, the ambiance and, and it was written, it was organic. I bet you think I don't know nothing But 
Miss Seely's Blues is up for an Academy Award as Best Song this year, and so is The Color Purple's entire score. In all, the movie is nominated for 11 Oscars. But the elimination of Steven Spielberg's name in the Best Director category has caused controversy, and so has the film's content. We expect that. You really do, because if you didn't, you, would pick, you wouldn't pick a book like this, you know. There's 21 landmines in it. There's nothing even close to being safe about Color Purple. Jones maintains there was no way the filmmakers could satisfy everybody. And in fact, there has been loud criticism from the producer's fellow blacks, who feel the movie shows black men in a poor light. The story's about women. It's about love. You know, it's not about men, black men. It's about a fixed set of time, a two hours and 20 minutes talking about a situation. It's one family, you know, it doesn't carry, I don't think it can carry the weight of the entire black race. In the music business, Quincy Jones is definitely a heavyweight. The biggest stars vie to work with him, and he's already earned three Oscar nominations for previous scores. But he describes working on The Color Purple as a humbling experience, and for that reason, he's taking his time before deciding if he'd like next to direct a film. Sandy Kenyon, CNN, Hollywood. Sister, you've been on my mind. In movie theaters around the country right now is Nomads, a thriller about evil spirits roaming around Los Angeles. I've seen them. Leslie Ann Down plays a doctor who becomes involved when a patient obsessed by the spirits dies and then possesses her. She talked about the film and her personal life with Malcolm Boys. Nomads is a psychological thriller starring Remington Steele's Pierce Brosnan as a deranged French anthropologist and Leslie Ann Down as the doctor trying to save his life. It's the latest in a string of starring roles that have taken down from her native England to a successful career in Hollywood. I was never ambitious, never ambitious at all. Most of the things that have happened to me as far as my career are concerned have, have happened. I haven't gone out and got them. I've never been uh, somebody that would, I suppose, scratch to get something. Tell me about the character you play in Nomads. The character played by Piers Brosnan uh, attacks her ear. <laughs> it sounds rather strange what he does. He attacks her ear and his will, brain, what he's trying to do, which is save his wife, goes boom into her brain. Off screen, Down's divorce from her second husband, William Friedkin, with allegations of infidelity and drug abuse, has been making headlines around the world. If you're vaguely well known, then people want to read about it. I don't think people think it's particularly scandalous. I think the press make it scandalous. The center of an ongoing custody battle between Down and Friedkin is their son, Jack, who now divides his time between his parents. It's a, a heartbreaking experience to have to go through. I don't understand hatred and destruction, but maybe it's all part of life's rich pattern, so that when I come to play a character that's got all of those things, I'll have something very real to base it on. Malcolm Boys, CNN, Hollywood. In this week's look at home entertainment, Dennis Michael reports on Pay-Per-View, a cable service designed to compete with home video stores. Pay-TV once had the movies at home market all to itself, but now video cassettes of recent films follow hard on the heels of theatrical releases. Usually movies are on the video store shelves months before they arrive in cabled homes. That lag has caused some erosion of Pay-TV growth in recent years. Now, however, one of Pay-TV's biggest guns, Showtime, the movie channel, is ready to fight back. With viewers' choice, there's no reason to go to the video store. That is the sales message. Viewer's Choice offers the new films at roughly the same time as the video cassette release. The channel runs those films as if it were a movie theater, the same picture every three hours, all day long. Whenever the viewer wants the channel unscrambled in order to see an offered film, he has to place an order by phone, and he's billed just under $5. Executive Vice President Scott Kernett says that figure is competitive with video cassette rental, even though rental averages about half that. The average consumer keeps the tape for 1.6 days so now and he gets charged for that so now he's up to 375 and then you say how much would you pay to have that tape delivered and returned 
picked up at the door. And he says, oh, a dollar. All of a sudden, you're at 475. Viewer's Choice puts a video store in your home. With the Viewer's Choice channel powered up late last year. This spring, it will double its film offerings. 800,000 subscribers are already being offered the chance to bypass the Corner Video Emporium. Kernet predicts pay-per-view will soon become a major force in home entertainment. Obviously, the home video industry has come along and become very significant. And quite naturally, pay-per-view, because the, the movies are available at roughly the same time, is a real good competitor of the home video industry. And in this struggle to get the movies to the audience more quickly and more conveniently, the winner is once again the consumer. Dennis Michael, CNN, Hollywood. And that's it for this edition of Showbiz Today. Be sure to join us tomorrow as we meet the Young Rascals' updated version, GC Dangerous, rocking hard in the 80s. I'm Liz Wickersham. And I'm Lee Leonard. For all of us here at Showbiz Today, good night from New York. <laughs>